Buddhism is having its Me Too movement uh, and Me Too moment, uh, as well as you know, Catholic Church and so many other places in the world. And it's not that it just started happening. This, this happened in Tibet. It happened, you know, it's not like it just started happening. Yeah, it, it's very difficult to realize or to hear that your teacher has been abusive sexually. Uh, I've been close to two communities where this has happened now and sort of on the edges of several others. One thing I think is important is to realize that the Dharma is yours. That it's not that that teacher who you're disappointed in, maybe angry at and so on, that they are the Dharma. They are a human being who practiced the Dharma and also made mistakes. So you need to realize that that's, they're not the Dharma. In other words, don't lose the Dharma in this process. Realize that you have the Dharma and that there's many sources for that. The other thing is, not to lose your compassion even for that person who was abusive. That to, to, to not lose bodhicitta. And I, I'm, I'm thinking perhaps this is a sort of um, yeah, extreme example, but I, I'm thinking of how the monks in Tibet would really try not to lose their compassion even when they were being tortured by the Chinese. And so if we, if we can confront this and hold bodhicitta for the victims and also for the perpetrators, that doesn't mean that we make excuses for the perpetrators and sort of like, oh, he had a difficult childhood. <laughs> you know, so. but, but more just to hold that heart of compassion and then to really let things come out and to, to say what, your experiences and so on. Uh, that, that's important. It's, it's really important that this isn't kept silent. And I, I know I was involved in, in supporting the woman who did the first court case against Sogyal in America. And I, so I knew a lot of what had happened, a lot more than I wanted to know. And she ended up getting paid off with a gag order, but she had significant abuse from him. So I knew for so long about him, and I had within myself a desire to expose this, and at the same time a fear that if I expose this, first of all, I will get attacked, and secondly, it, this will reflect on Buddhism, and this will be what people associate with Buddhism, like now you think Catholic Church, abuse. And it'll become like that. And so I held back on, on that. And also, I did have experience of coming forward about, about this, and also about another Lama who was abusive, and I was then challenged and, and attacked myself instead of them. And, um, and, and that's happened to women historically about when they've been raped, they, they ended up getting attacked. And so that, I think there's been the fear of that flip happening. And we just saw it again now with uh, Christine Blasey Ford getting attacked, you know, with Kavanaugh and that whole thing. So you can see why, why women don't speak up. And when they do, I think it's really important that they're witnessed and honored and, and believed.